Um, yeah, I suppose, no, I suppose, as I said, I got older, so I can have it, so I will. Mm. And uh, for years and years, you do things, you go, oh, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Well, now I go, well, no, if this is not that, I don't really want to do it. I don't mm. have to do it. It's nice to get, uh, the only thing is, it's that we've got a lot of excitement on this new album. And you think, yeah, yeah. And I think, well, where am I going? I'm 70. <laughs> It's not like in five years, I c oh no, I'm going downhill, not uphill. Okay. Is, it, is that a difficult realization? Yeah. For when I got to 70, it was very. Okay. Which was last, it was May, just gone. But up until then, it was kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I find it odd. The manager, the agents, the record company, yeah. Mm. Where do you think I'm fucking going? <laughs> Where will I be in, seven, in, in five years? I might be dead tomorrow. It's a reality. <laughs> It's a reality to you. You know, you may walk out there and get yeah, run, yeah, run over. Yeah, yeah. However, the older you get, all those other possibilities, cancer may hit me, I may have a heart attack, I may have a stroke, all those things. I may fall over because I'm old. All those things come in. Oh, put this on this. Another possibility. Your possibilities of dying are far less than mine. And that becomes the reality. Right. And it really hit me when I was 70. What, what, what was the turnaround then for you in, in that kind of... In well, in the age, it's just literally hitting 70 and then really... Because I, I make jokes, I always... One of my daughters said, don't keep making jokes. I say, well, I may not see you tomorrow. Mm. And it's a, it becomes a reality, and I've always done that with everything. About It's kind of saying the things you shouldn't, you mm. know, to address them. Um, well, I could be dead, you may go... You make it next week, I'm dead. You say, he fucking said that. I was talking to him. He said he was going to die. Well, you, you seem very, very alive. Uh, yeah, I still. do. I'm very fit, very healthy. But sometimes you'll read so and say, look, never did any drugs. Never did, fucking drop dead. Well, that's true. And then, the, but the other way, yeah, the with other, Keith Richards and, and I know. The, how long let me. Bastard. <laughs> yeah. Can he do it? Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, so... The, I, I don't know what it is, it's genes, but it, I, I, I suppose it's also a certain uh, passion for life in a way, I suppose. You, you I think there's a definite uh, cognitive thing. Mm. I do lots of crosswords, I do word puzzles and stuff, and mm. I, I can't read because my mind is doing things. I'm planning uh, status quo. Oh, I've, I've got to do a TV uh, tomorrow, right. and they want to know about hobbies and stuff. And, uh, hobbies? <laughs> I don't have a hobby. Um, uh, what do I read? Well, I can't read because I'm thinking, I'm, I'm t planning stuff for Status Quo for next year. I'm planning stuff for myself for next year. And then there's the possibility of the 21 and at the end of 21 and in 22. But and then I said to you, that, oh shit, I'll be 73. <laughs> if I'm here, then I'll do so and so. So I do think, and I, I can't stop. <laughs> and I used to be uh, embarrassed or worried about that. I don't worry about that anymore. Mm. People say he talks too much. Yep. Well, that's, that's where the title of your book comes from. Yeah, right? yeah. I do talk too much. But in what sense? Too much, uh, too honestly? No, I don't understand people saying it's honest. There's nothing wrong with being honest. And I think sometimes me being too honest about show business pisses people off. Because mm. it, it, it is a facade. And I think other people in show business don't like me doing it. But... No, I can, I can just waffle on and I can go into tangents and come back and find, and I find it interesting. Mm. I forget that the guy in front of me... No, for, for someone like me, that's, uh, that's a blessing because uh, that, makes my, well, that makes my job a lot easier yeah, if somebody's yeah. willing to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, I don't mind talking. So, well, but I, th I think what you just said is a, is a nice starting off point. Um, you said kind of being uh, famous and, and that whole show business thing is, is somewhat of a facade. When, when you were younger and when you, when you were just starting in music, 62, 63, what, what did you see in front of you? Um, there's a thing we talk about these days about manifesting one's future. Mm. And my PA is very good at it. And the band, everybody in the band talks about how she's really good at it. She'll tell you what she's going to do, and it happens. Okay. Now, if I do that, it's like my ego or my person gets it and it messes up. Mm. When I was really young, I had this idea that I wanted to be famous, whatever it is. And then I had to stop thinking about it because anything I've ever done and tried, it's like we try and manipulate things. But I also very naively, because of the Beatles, 
And because of the facade of showbiz, that you mm. think everybody will love you. And that, the idea of that to me when I was younger was great. That there'd be no aggression, nobody would be mm. nasty. And we were talking this morning that um, with the advent of, uh, of um, social media uh, and, and the internet, people can be particularly vicious and it can get to you. Mm. It gets to me, you know, whether it gets to me, it, it becomes, I can see it. Whereas in those early days, I doubt if anybody saw, I didn't think anybody disliked the Beatles. Which, mm. So that was part of the facade that it would be lovely. And I remember thinking, I was married before um, Matchstick Men. And I remember being in bed thinking, if the record takes off, you know, if you become mm. whatever this is, that um, my wife and I wouldn't argue, we wouldn't argue with her mother. Uh, her mother and my parents would get along. La, 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 la. It'd be like that. After. Right, and yeah. I heard um, Michael Caine talking the other day about something, and he said the same thing. He said, you, no matter what happens, you wake up with you. Mm. And I say this to one of my sons who's having a bit of a tricky time, doesn't know where he's going, even at 30. He gets great jobs, great money, and he's still not necessarily happy. And I said to him that the thing, we're, again, these days is it, the system, which we're all part of, we start to lie to each other, each industry, each business. So it's telling you, if you read this magazine and brush your teeth and have your beard and your hair, you'll be so fucking happy. <laughs> when I, and I said to him, even though I've got everything I want, really, does not mean that I wake up blissfully happy every fucking day. Mm. And I think, Somehow the system or life is trying to tell us it will be this way. Well, no, it won't. That can't be. There's no yin and yang there. There's no relativity. The, right. the piss with relativity is there's going to be shit. <laughs> and, I, and we want it all. My wife is very much little house on the prairie. Everything in her life she sees as fantastic. So I try not to mess that for her because she's sure. at a place where isn't everything lovely. But one one thing I read uh, about what you said is that that you're in a really good place uh, these days, but also that that maybe the best best times were were early on when you were just starting the band. I you? think that with everything, about ten years ago, I, I was in a house that I'd lived in from 1974, and I never wanted to leave it. And I fell in love with a house literally a few hundred yards away. Mm. And one of my sons again, we were talking, and uh, we'd been there a few weeks. He said, "Dad," I said, "What?" He said, well, uh, he was frightened to tell me, you know. He said, but you know what you say about the danger of expectation, looking forward to So he said, it was almost better looking forward to living here than it is actually living here. Mm. And I think that... Ask me the question again, what did you ask me? Well, well uh, why early on, kind of the, the beginnings of the band, where you see that as right. your spirit. And, and, and when you get four or five young guys together, it's all of you against the world. Right. And then when Rick joined the band... It was myself and Rick against, not against the others, but against, against the world, against the world. And then you become successful. And that's okay for a while, and that becomes the norm. Like, I mean, people perhaps will understand when they're looking forward to a new car. Mm. I do it every two or three years. I'm getting my new car. It's the same car. I get the same BMW every time. And I go, oh, oh I'll get my new car. And, I, and now it's in the garage. Mm. And it's the car that's in the garage at the house when I'm... Everything becomes the norm. And as I said, that part of the system tells us that it'll be fantastic when you get this, when you have this, when you have this woman, this food, this meal, this, this holiday, this... And I think that the world... And my generation were part of it. We were, it was all going to be fabulous in the future. And people, people are, uh, have such great expectations that even if the event achieves 90% of their expectation, their overall feeling is disappointment. Right. Even though it's got 90% of it. So I, people think I'm being grumpy or negative. No, I just don't look forward to anything particularly. I'm very much looking forward to my lunch today because I knew two days ago it was going to be a crocodile tour and um, a Caesar salad. For some reason... Sounds good. Yeah, so that I look forward to. And even so, if there's a disappointment in that, it's not too bad. Mm. When, I, when, I, when we were doing gigs, we did, um, did Vakken the other year and Alcatraz last year and, mm. and, and we've done uh, Glastonbury a couple of times. 
And people are always saying, what are you going to do when you get... To, we're going to do a gig. Are you going to do something special? Why would it be more special than yesterday's gig? You mean these people are not as important as these mm. people? But our business does that. And so we would get to... So I, I needed to go into Glastonbury or wherever. Mm. This isn't very... This is just all... Otherwise, I had that. And I'm on the stage looking for this moment instead of letting the moment... And I find that by allowing the moment to just develop. Right. And the older I get, the better I'm at doing that. So right. I tend to really enjoy myself very much at the moment. Having said that, <laughs> I'd probably get to a gig tomorrow or whenever and go, shouldn't have said that to him. <laughs> but what you say is quite interesting in terms of uh, having success then, especially when success comes and then realizing that it's not the end all be all. Um, was 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 there a kind of a, a moment that you realized, well, this isn't gonna all this adjuration, that's not what will make me happy? Well, initially, I could see myself lying in the bed just at home when I was with my first wife and Maxim, and I'd just come home from top of the pops and realizing that, ah, no, sorry, I'll move back. Oh, no, that nothing right. has changed. So, so, the, and that's a continual. And, and it, the good and bad thing about, I suppose, why I keep doing this, or why any band keeps going, is you walk on, and oh, how's it going to be? And it gets there, and the gig, it's great, and you walk off, and it'll go, yeah! And there's a couple of hours, oh, that was good, I enjoyed that. And you wake the following morning, you've got to do it again. Mm. So it never actually reaches this carrot that's... Right. That's up. And... Um, you're always trying to do that. It just keeps going and keeps going. But if it didn't, perhaps... But sorry, I'm okay. No, 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 no. So, so just perhaps, I'll, I'll um, move along. Perhaps if it didn't do that, it'd be like, oh. It's like those, uh, they must have them here. It's very good here watching the ladies walk past. <laughs> um, you must have that um, talent show here we have in England. Uh, yeah, we have, uh, I, I think, idols or... or yeah, the idols, or, right, or okay. Kind of so... I occasionally have watched them and you see so oh he's good, you know, and you want him to win or her to win or them to win. And then they win. Mm -hmm. Now to then it's the culmination. I've done it, I've right. made it. And that was another thing I realised. Oh, it begins now. It doesn't end. It kind of it seems that it's goal to reach. And they get there. And then to me or whomever, everybody out there, their record's on the radio and it's just another record with the rest of the records. And to people like me, they become competition. <laughs> so as much as I was, well done, <laughs> well, now you're competition. If he's on a gig somewhere, it's competition. Right. And I think that's another thing that hits them that, oh shit, this is difficult. Yeah, <laughs> it looks great, but it's difficult. But is that what happened then? Um in the early 70s, where, where when the success came and you had some, some great creative uh, outings that, that all of a sudden everything comes at you and there's more expectations, there's more business around it, there's more, uh, everybody wants I, a little I'm, bit from you. I was lucky with the business angle. I grew up in retail, my parents right. were in retail, so you, there's an understanding of the business. This mm. is the thing that's, so I said to you, I'm kind of obsessed with status quo and always have been. It's just the business, as it were. Mm. Um, question again? No, no but uh, uh, because you mentioned that was the moment, kind of when when you had to start working. You, you think you've you'd arrive, but then all of yeah. a sudden it gets even even yeah. busier. And well, as I said, part of that thing at the end of each day and the end of each gig, then at the end of each album, the end of each single. Every time you did a single, wow, this is doing really well. The record company, the press, whomever. What's your next single? Shit, gives a break. <laughs> yeah. And it never stops doing that. Perhaps that when we were talking off camera, perhaps that's one of the things that keeps people like us going, that it never, it's never satisfied. Worst struggle I've known, because mm. it's never satisfied, at least when I eat. Creatively? Or, or in Creative, terms of success? Well, creatively too, because there is this looking for something new. I'm not looking for something new. I'm just looking for that thing that, oh, like in that mm. meal. Why do we go to that restaurant? I don't know. It's fantastic. Well, it's mm. another Italian restaurant. Yeah, but in there it's, yeah, but spaghetti al I know, but it's, so that's the same thing. Mm. Why in, in a song, in an arrangement, and people have always knocked status quo for the one, four, five sequences, the same chords. 
Well, everybody's using the same fucking chords. <laughs> so there's, that's why lots of other people go... I can imagine that it puts uh, a certain amount, because you mentioned, well, first it was uh, the band against the world, and then you and Rick uh, and the band against the world. But having that type of success, that must have changed a lot of things. It the, the changes all of us. Within, I, think, yeah. I think there was a point when each one of us, only thinking this morning, each one of us, particularly, I think, particularly me, myself, Rick, and Alan, thought each one of us thought we were the reason it was successful. Mm. And the only person I think about it really is that doesn't do that and has never done that was John Coglin. Okay. Rick, for some reason, certain people got in between our relationship and there was a time in uh, in Nice Airport one day, he said, I'm fed up being number two. That really worried me. At that point, I thought, what do you mean number two? We were, it was always me and Rick. Mm. And uh, and I think managers, agents, whomever, uh, um, uh, wives, girlfriends, we were that close that people found that. And I possibly upset other people in the band that him and I were that close. Mm. And we played with being that close. So what happened is that people, wanted, you've got to split that up. Management people at the time, not all of them, sure, had to try and get between Rick and I to manipulate what they wanted the band to do or each one of us to do. And um, I think there were other things in Rick's life. He, he lost one of his children. That was bad for him. He's, there was a lady in... Um, in Atlanta that came in the dressing room one night and she came across the room looking at him like that, I know you. And we're both <laughs> yeah. And uh, he was, we, well, him and I used to smoke a lot. And um, that, the following day, he would never speak about it again. He never smoked again. He just would not okay. talk about whatever happened. And it frightened him. So he went more back into drinking, it got worse than drinking, and then after his child died, it got more and more. So him and I got further and further apart, and then he began to believe, he began to believe it more. Mm. And he was a great singer, and he wrote very nice little songs. <laughs> when I can't see all the reasons, nice little, which I loved. But for some reason, his best bit, he didn't like, he wanted to become the archetypal rock star. Yeah which wasn't Ricky and so that was sorry go ahead no no because I've, I've uh, uh, heard you say this before why do you think that is why do you think that, that he wanted to be that rock star wanted I don't to... know he looked it he didn't mm. need to go there everyone looked at Rick and wanted to be him he had that great look mm. so many other guys I a picture in the wall <laughs> so many other guys tried to look that way he just looked that way and Someone did it with insecurity, became more and more insecure, and he wanted to be this rock thing that he wasn't. And so that was getting worse between the two of us as the years went by. And he was stood out here one day. He was so badly drunk early in the evening. And he, and he was trying to convince me, he said, how cool he looks when he's drunk. I said, but you don't. He said, yeah, you don't understand. So he... Once he was in that condition, his confidence was there. He felt, which is sad to me, because it wasn't the guy I loved. Yeah. And that would cause more and more rift between the two of us. I mean, the guy I knew when we first met was fabulous. And especially then, uh, because we don't have to go into to, to all the substance abuse and, and uh, everything, but... Uh -huh. um, substance, I love the way you call it, substance <laughs> it, it sounds so much sweeter. Yeah, really, yeah. <laughs> um, but, but that kind of... Exacerbated that rift between the two of you yeah. because you were kind of getting rid of Straight all, all there, of yeah. that, and then so, so well, interestingly, we were in in, in Switzerland with Queen, at a restaurant, a Mexican, and um, you often get pressure. Men do this to other men. Have a drink. What kind of a man sure. are you? There's this thing that a man takes his son out when he's eighteen and gives him a drink. Well, if you took him out giving drugs, we'd say it was terrible, but. So anyway, I'm sitting there, and I'd always have pressure. My, my parents didn't drink. I was lucky. And um, I think it was John Cogg. Go on, have a drink. And I, there were six margaritas on this table, so I drank them all. I said, mm. There you go. So what? I, <laughs> I see why you drink now. You know, so, hey, and I quite like the sweet drink. And that went, very, that went for five, six years, perhaps, maybe a bit more. And 
it was that that led me to cocaine. Mm. So the idea that this evil town here that's legalised cannabis and stuff, or like it did in Canada, oh, that leads people to drugs, this is not true. Mm. The thing that makes us all really uh, do unacceptable things is the alcohol thing, because, oh, 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 you Mm. don't care. And that's what made me do, I said, yeah, I'll try cocaine. If I'd have been straight, I wouldn't have done that. And those were the things that were... um, as I stopped doing the cocaine and stopped doing the alcohol, that was the thing that I would see. My, and it, there's some, there's some a, a guy at work in, in our crew, mm. he used to be a heavy drinker, and he stopped. And he said, isn't everybody boring when they're drunk? I said, well, yeah. I said, but you, they're happy when they're drunk. You know, well, it, well, you, he said, did I used to be like that? Said, yes. And so now he has to... It makes you seem weird because you have to get distance from everybody else. Mm. And that between Rick and I got worse and worse and worse. There were times we were fine together, but but when we were straight. What were the, how were the good moments in between those periods then? Kind of, were there still good moments on stage? Yeah, yeah, they were, he would be himself. And his insecure self, I'd sometimes be in a position where he, he treat me like his dad or his mum and asked me for advice and this yeah. and that and what's going to happen to me, why don't I, why is this like this and why is that like that? Um, there was a time in the O2, about two years before he died, he was really worried about things. Mm. And so I'd be in that position, well, why don't you do this and why don't you do that? Yeah, all right. Well, where is that? Well, I don't know, it's yours. It was something business by. He said, well... Should, should I know where that is? I said, well, yeah, I thought you'd... So we'll try and find out for you where that is. And As I said, someone along the line knew how to um, find his weakness. And it, mm. and it was being called number two. Really hated it. And I said before that, him and I were just... It's me and Rick. They were the two people in status quo. Um, unfair to Alan and everybody else, but that's how sure. it worked out. But that caused a rift between the two of us. I thought, what do you mean? I'm, but I don't understand. So, and um, that got kind of worse. But they were, of course, they were great times. We would have, and we'd have great conversations. There'd be moments. But then, of course, he'd, he'd need his drink and he'd go off and have his drink and then that person would disappear. Mm. And especially because you mentioned the, the later 2000 years, uh, because you, you kind of... Uh, I don't know if you lost touch completely, but you, you weren't on the best of terms for a couple of years. So, so once, once you... Uh... No, but we were very good at carrying on with the thing. You know, there was okay. a point we... Um, hello. We were on... Um, the band had two buses instead of the one. Mm. And of course everyone's saying, you know, it's really bad between Rossi and Parfit. They're on separate buses. Well, the truth was is that Rick and I were on one bus and the rest of the band were on another. Right. So if we were that bad, well, it did get bad, but if we were that bad, mm. we still never s- separated buses, the two of us together. And so it's got, got blown out of proportion a bit. Yeah, and it does. I mean, but mm. it would be, we probably wouldn't take, talk for a few days. But the, we got on and did the job. I took care of the business and this is what's how it's going. And, the way, and then he was fine. Mm. Um, but that would uh, and we never got to a point of hitting each other I think that would have done it and I hear uh, lots of people because we were there yeah. um, men do that to each other don't <laughs> they girls go stop it <laughs> sorry girls it's, it's more and more on the mental yeah, uh, yeah. but the, I, I don't like the, the idea of any hitting each other well, that would, I would have stopped but, was there ever a, a serious point where you thought well this band uh, will, will stop yeah, 19, when, when I split with the others. And okay. I didn't want to do that anymore, and I didn't tell anybody. I, I didn't know what it was. You have to understand, we talked about the early period. Mm. We made an album, and lots of bands were doing this thing. Mm. You did an album a year, right. plus touring in between. How the fuck did we do that? <laughs> Just do another album, another album, another album. And by, uh, and as I said, that the late 70s into the early 80s, it was getting fractious between all of us. Mm. And um, and that's understandable. Again, there's these young boys at 11 or 12 years old. La, 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 la. You know, it's going to be great. And we grow up, become men, we have money, we have wives, children, and you grow differently. Um, 
So by the uh, 80s, early 80s, I, saw, I got to, well, I think that's when we had the end of the road tour. And I thought, well, we could, we could still make records. And I remember a record executive saying to me, that's not possible. States Quo doesn't tour, it can't sell albums. I said, really? <laughs> That's not a good thing to tell me that you can't do. It. Oh, well, I'm going to try and do that then. Mm. Um, up to where we are now as well, that people have said, you can't do that without Rick. And the best thing they could do was tell me I can't do it without Rick because I'm going to try then. Um, they told Rick and I we couldn't do it without Alan and John, so we fucking tried. Mm. So that's a, that's a very strange thing. And so... I stopped, and then I was quite happy. I don't know what I was going to do. I must have, at, at some point, had to come back and do something. But I remember a manager coming and said that the record company were going to go and sue me for the money, which wasn't true, and, uh, but I believed it, <laughs> and that, um, that Alan and Rick had been to the record company and they didn't want that. Right, which appealed to my ego, I suppose. Sure. And he said, I said, well, I'll do one album. I don't mind doing one album. Well, fine, we settled to do one album. And um, I remember driving to Chipping Norton with Rick and saying, look, we're going to do In the Army. He said, I'll do whatever you say. Whatever you say, it's fine. And that was, he was really low at that point. And, uh, and we were quite good for a while then, but once the success was there again, and... He could have fooled everything else, the coke and the alcohol. So that carried on for a while. Right. Well, one, one thing that I find interesting, because you mentioned social media earlier, uh, what, what, would have, what would it have been like if, if social media was around back then? Do, do, do you, do, are you happy that it wasn't a part of, a no, part of the industry? Of the, I, it was how it was. That's what's, you, it's very mm. difficult to say what sure. comes next sure. and, and say, would it have been like this now? I'm just aware it's very difficult to avoid it. I mean, I have a phone in my pocket <laughs> and, um, and various people want to tell you and various people want to express their opinions whereas they would never have done it before. They would never have written to a paper and the paper would never have printed it. And um, I'm very aware at the moment that people are tearing me apart for getting up in the morning, really. Yeah. And they have all sorts of ideas of what's going on And it seems that certain people are trying to impress other people with the knowledge they think they have. Mm. And sometimes you're desperate to respond, but no, lovely, I love those dogs. <laughs> Why hair dash on. And um, you're desperate to respond. There was something that the, Leon was reading out on the bus that somebody had heard that one of the new tracks from the album called Backbone. Right. And a guy was very excited when he heard the intro, but as soon as the keyboard came in, he couldn't listen anymore which is really interesting because there are no keyboards on it. <laughs> so you see what I mean? You think, oh, you're desperate to tell these people, but it's, it's, it's futile to engage. It's sure. kind of silly to engage. Because you, oh, sorry, but, but you, you've mentioned about uh, status quo as well, that, that it's kind of like, you describe it like Marmite, people love it or uh, oh, hate it's it. It's, it's very divisive. So, so, but uh, is, it, is it easier uh, as the years go on to, to let those things go? Or it, does it still kind of... Linger in the the back point of mind. being, I'd find it easier to let go, but now there's more and more stuff going on <laughs> everywhere, wherever you look. Fair enough. Uh, my phone keeps... You know this thing that's been going on about Siri? Hey, mm. Siri. <laughs> so, Siri's been listening to us. Now, the amount of times we've mentioned status quo... I keep getting all of these things <laughs> telling me, why don't you listen to status quo? <laughs> <laughs> and it'll tell me all, all sorts of other things that people... Anything related. And then you see comments... So it's so difficult to ignore it. Now, me telling there's buggers that, they're going to do it all the more, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Probably the, the way they Yeah, knock they yourselves work, out, yeah. yeah. But then you mentioned, okay, so in the army, you think, oh, I'll, I'll do one more album. Mm. And, yeah. But now... Uh, oh, well, so also, many... so, something else happened I can't really talk about, but it was... We were on a bus one day, and this manager we had, he said, I've got something for you. What? And he brought a girlfriend that I had at the time into, into the... And from then on, my on-the-road expenses <laughs> <laughs> trebled. And, <laughs> and I realised too, going, where we talk about Rick and myself and what was going on, is to, and all of us in this industry, sure. they, they just go on, give him what he wants, shut him up, just give it him, so he won't go to work. Right. So uh, where, uh, why, why would we... Um, 
cocaine will be supplied, whatever, brought in, they'll find it for you if you ask for it. Whatever it was, alcohol, give it to them. Like Just keep them happy. Get so in on that yeah. fucking stage. Yeah, and I understand that. But it's worthwhile people realising that's what goes on. Mm. And I dare say in all areas of show business, not just the rock and roll area. Yeah. The, 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 and all areas of life, I would think, yeah. But now I think, and I'm, I'm not 100% sure if this is correct, but this is album number 33 back So on. I'm told, yeah, I didn't count. But yeah, it's due <laughs> that we actually recorded. Yeah, I think there have been all sorts of compilations and such. But mm. yeah. Was there... Um, What was the lead up towards this album? Were you, let's say, a couple? Do yeah, I, I didn't want to do an album, no. And Why the record not? company, Why not? I thought, oh, because of all the, oh, are you okay without Rick? Oh, jeez. Mm. And the fact that we did albums without Rick for quite a few times, and Rick would just put, we'd put him on at the end because mm. either he was ill or he wasn't there or he's incapacitated or he, the last acoustic ones he wasn't. All that people don't want to hear that. Um, But the manager at the record company kept pushing. I said, no, I don't want to do it. No, 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 I'm not interested. Mm. And then I thought, okay, I'll, I don't mind doing it now. My producer, I'll pick the material. I'll say when it goes, yes, no, what's that? Be really dictatorial about it. And the manager and the record company said, all right, shit. I thought they'd say no. <laughs> But okay. And then I mentioned it to John and Andrew, which made things between the three of us a little fractious for a few weeks. But once we started work on the album and it started to come together, everybody worked very, very well on it. I mean, John Edwards played some of the best bass playing I've ever, mm. particularly for status quo, but he's such a really great bass player. And please don't show him this. <laughs> <laughs> everybody did extremely well on the album. So that was, it was a joy to make. Now, in this position, and after everything I've just said, well, of course I would say that, so whether you believe me or not, <laughs> it's up to you, but I really enjoyed making it, and thus far it's been received very well. But it's not the 70s, it won't sell four million, and uh, we can now, we don't know what happens to a release well, date. But that's an interesting point as well, and it's probably way too grand a topic to talk about, but one, one thing I... I find interesting is you were around when the Beatles were around but then you've you've experienced all those decades all those uh, fast grunge music coming up going back down again all those yeah. things so how do you perceive the music industry in, in terms of its kind of trends and, and those kind of how do you look at the music well probably industry? in a negative way and things are very cyclical musically mm. Because of the but you can't, sorry, but you can't help but see, okay, there's someone that's promotion, that's not real, it's promotion. I'm never really sure if Keith and Mick actually get on as badly as people say. Uh, I definitely don't think the Gallagher brothers get on as badly as people say. I'm sure they'll come out and tour. I'm sure they're pissed off if I keep saying this. <laughs> but it's what I forget, it's the whole showbiz, oh, excuse me, the whole showbiz <laughs> thing that goes on. But I'm still here and taking part, and I'm doing it with you. Mm. So that's why I'm, I'm aware it's gone on over the years. And then in the morning when I wake, or sometimes when you're a bit tired, you think, what a load of... And then I get enthused, and away I go again. I start doing it. As I said, I really enjoyed making the album. Mm. But in the end, it's just an album of some bunch of old guys that have been around a long time that most people don't like. <laughs> And that's the truth of it all. That's another thing going back to the Beatles, mm -hmm. is that <clears throat> uh, I don't know how many records they were supposed to have sold, but I mean, I always take Michael Jackson did 45 million or so on Thriller. Mm -hmm. Well, if he did 45 million records in America alone, it means that most people in America didn't buy it. Oh, I don't know any album that sold two or three hundred million or a billion. And even if it sold a billion, it would mean that six billion, billion people didn't buy it. Now, those kind of things get in here, and I think, shit. But it's a good leveler for me, I think, because mm. it's very easy in this position, particularly for this long, to start thinking, I am, I am. And it keeps telling that there's everything about it, tells you I am. And it's one of the things that I kept getting fed into Rick that right. I didn't understand with him which was sad to do it to him. But yeah, and loads of other people, that you, you see them walk in, hello? What makes you think you're any different? I don't take whom you like, Lady Gaga, Madonna, people with a ridiculous profile like that, sure. suddenly walk in, 
wait a minute, you were that little girl in thinking he was desperate to be successful. Now people can't come near. Hello. Right. It's very strange. Yeah, that must be to, to it see, is. see that happening, and especially, like you say, to people close to you as well. Yeah, that's to what's worse, is that I'd sit around and say, Rick, this is us. He'd go, don't, he didn't want to tell you that. And then another, another day, it'd be all fine. He'd laugh about it, he'd laugh mm. a lot about it. Because one thing I, I read was that um, you don't like to, to kind of look back at the legacy because you think it's a little bit pompous. And, uh... It's nice. People think I don't like it or I have. So I read the other, some guy said I hated the 70s and hated the bad. No, I didn't. I loved it, which is why I nurtured it. But what I don't like is the overblown, it's sacred. No, like all bands, there were some great moments and some shit. If you right. don't want to accept that, that's not my problem. I have to get a balance, otherwise my ego gets out of control mm. and starts thinking, oh my God, you know, I'm just... And don't think I don't have that a little bit. I must have. I'm there, must, there must have been moments. Well, it must be now too. I'm sat here with you <laughs> telling you all about my life. You know what I mean? But I didn't hate the band or hate the things. I hated some of the shit that went on, yes. But the, the, that's what I wanted to ask, kind of. But you do appreciate, kind of, because uh, it's true, uh, relatively speaking, uh, more people haven't listened to, to the music yeah. they have. But at the that's same everybody. time. That's everybody, yeah. But at the same time, I mean, you have touched lives and you have uh, sold, uh, what was it, 118 million records yeah, yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah. So, so that, can, you, can you find a sense of pride in that? I, I, I suppose I do, but I won't voice it. I think it's, it, it's dangerous for me to go that route. It feeds into something, as I'd said to you, that I don't want to feed in myself. Mm. And it's very easy for me to start getting carried away. Oh, I'm sat in front of a camera talking to you, going, hey, I tell you my life. That, I'm very, very careful. Fair so enough. I do quote all those things because they, I hear them too when I say them to you. And it's such a sad fact that toothbrushes so are much more popular than Stateless Quo or even the Beatles. Mm -hmm. You can buy a toothbrush any fucking where on the planet and there's fucking billions of them. <laughs> I know, someone sent me a thing this morning on my phone. This is marvellous. Listen, particularly as it kind of relates to Quo. Um, where has he put it? One moment. Are you going to edit or yeah, not? Yeah, no, I can cut things One out. One second, fine. where are you, Jeremy? There are more pairs of jeans than people in the world. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's great news, everybody. There are more chickens. Do you know what I mean? Sure. And we make out that this rock and roll thing is important. And this attitude, where does uh, that come from? What, uh, is that from from uh, how you grew up? Yeah. Kind of not, not my mother and father were very supportive, but my mother particularly wasn't. Um, never got over over overblown with anything. And I, but I find myself. It's the yin and yang, the relative. The one of the most frustrating things about life to me is the relativity. We have a democracy everywhere, but that in itself is a pain in the ass. That means right. nobody agrees. We've had democracy for as long as I can remember, and England is still in turmoil. Right. And uh, there are people in Holland who think, wow, it's lovely here. And there are people who hate your system that are part of it. Oh, why can't we just... But we wouldn't have relativity, and I find relativity frustrating. Mm. I'd love it to be absolute. It is this. It would be easier. Yeah. yeah. Now, I know a lot of people say, well, no, it'd be boring. Well, not for me. I wouldn't find that boring. I think it'd be like my, my wife, Little House on the Prairie and, and, um, and the Waltons. Oh, la, 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 la. <laughs> Everything's lovely. I, I would like that, I think. Final question then, because, uh, well, the new album is called uh, Backbone. Backbone. When did... This idea, and I wrote down that lyric, uh, you got to have a backbone to live this life. When, when That's John Edwards, I think. Now, yeah. whether he was uh, referring to the, the point where the band was in and the negativity that we carried on, whether it was that, I don't know. But we started writing the song with bits. Well, I had this piece on stage and used to keep saying to me, we should do something. Mm. <laughs> and when we decided to start writing, we sent this back per, per thing uh, back and forth to each other. And when writing, lots of people do it, I think. You go, and the sound comes out. So, all that sound. Backbone sounds good. And I thought the other day he's got backbone, to live this life the way that you want to. All these phrases in that song are things you've heard before, and the same in Liberty Lane. 
thinking now oh, the time has slipped away, but it's really not so bad. With that, the eight, you don't miss what you never had. They're all little sayings that you've heard before. Yeah. So he came up with the idea of backbone in itself. And there was, um, I was putting the thing together and working on it. And he had this little demo that he'd worked on. And there was this, and he was, na, 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 na. So I like that. Mm. That was intended to have lyrics. I said, no, 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 we can't have na, 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 na. It's excellent to me. And, um, but then the manager heard it and straight away said, great title for an album. Mm. Good. So what I think happened with this album, and it's one of the things that's great, it's part of the creative process, mm, it's delicious, is that bits came about accidentally, almost what for want of that, that thing, expression, organically. Sure. Didn't expect that, and the manager tried that. The woman, that, one of the people that saw the uh, promo stuff, had the idea of the backbone thing, and then somebody else said, well, what about all oh, that's enjoyment? <laughs> One last thought then. Because That's two last thoughts. Did well, you hear yeah. what he did there? I, I know. <laughs> yeah. I, I apologize. So, um, nice. But, but yeah. kind of what we started this uh, this uh, talk with uh, about you turning 70, uh, the oh, last track on the album is called Running Out of Time. Yes. Um, I, I hear some other things. That's myself. It's about the planet. Yeah, I, 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 I heard was, other things about was, that idea of running yeah, out of time. Yeah, I was doing time. some promo in London a few weeks ago and this guy was very taken with the album. He said, I'm so pleased to hear you've done this. He was really giving me all the lovely pluses. And he said, my favorite album is probably never too late. I said, oh good, and we carried on. He said, this one sounds a little in the sound like um, Mark Kelly and maybe Dogger to it. I said, oh yeah, and you've done this song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, you <laughs> one moment. He said, you've done um, Running Out of Time. I said, yeah, he said, what well, it's a, Comment on the planet, he's never done that before. Yes, we have. You just said your favourite was never too late. The world is in a mess and finished more or less. It's, oh, yeah. So it's very weird that, uh, and it's not unique, the amount of people in our business that I can think of now that have done uh, songs about the planet that were running out of time. On that, while we're there, I'm sure we've contributed to global warming. Oh, but I'm um, also. Sure, it's a cyclical thing. There's a cycle that goes on, whether it's a quarter of a million year cycle or a half a million year cycle, as in Ice Age and, and so on. We played it worse, but I, don't, I think it would have gone on anyway, whether we were here or not. I know that's maybe even more unpopular than before, but there you are. Well, I heard uh, American comedian George Carlin say oh, about him. Do, do you remember what he said I about it? He George said, Carlin. the earth is fine. We're, the people on it are fine. Oh, the earth is fine. I love George Carlin. <laughs> I love George Carlin. I've been listening to his very stuff recently about okay. but advertising and stuff. Yeah, has been, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. I, I have to wrap up because I'm sorry. They'll, yeah. they'll get mad you at me. shouldn't have mentioned George Carlin. I love him. <laughs> Francis, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much thank for you. listening to me.